if there's anyone who would like to have a last yun, please do so now, because once the box is closed, it will not be opened again. Please close the box. With, with faith in Jesus Christ, receive the body of our brother Roberto for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that we raise into perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O God of grace and glory, remember before you this day our brother Roberto. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us to mourn, give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence, we may continue our course on earth until we are called and we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and uh, I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall uh, never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into this world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the service of thanksgiving for the life and witness of Roberto. This act of worship now continues as we sing the opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. before you today, your servant, Roberto. And we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, 
you will receive him more and more into your joyful service, that at all who served you in the past, he may share in eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word, the first scripture reading. The first reading. That reading. The first reading is taken from Lamentation chapter 3, reading verses 22 to 26 and 31 to 33. Lamentation chapter 3, verses 22 to 26 and 31 to 33. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. We have the 23rd Psalm, as found on the leaflet. Yeah. 
is from Ephesians chapter 3, reading verses 14 to 19. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. As you have been rooted and grounded in love, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the sense what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know that the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the singing of the gradual hymn through all the changing scenes of life.
Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. St. John chapter 14, beginning to read at the first verse. And it came to pass that Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord. I am tempted to borrow some words from the Shakespeare play Julius Caesar and to adapt them to my feelings for this evening. I just simply like to say, I have come here to celebrate the life of a friend and to bury him, Roberto. And I say this because somewhere in 2019, I met Roberto Green. He came to one of the midday services here on a Wednesday. We were introduced, and uh, since then, a friendship and a bond developed between him and myself. Then he was living in Entrepo, and very often as I'm traversing south, to go to St. Mary's or further south to River Dory. I'll pass him sitting at the junction, the Martian Junction, at a lady friend of his who vend uh, fruits and vegetables, etc. And we'll always shout each other. But beyond that, Roberto would walk to church on a Sunday morning, he will come for the 8.30 service, but he will get here well before the 6 o'clock service was finished, so that he was always on time for church. And uh, very often after service, he would travel further north and visit with some friends. 
und das Call Names, so mal hier. Later on, Roberto took to the idea of going to church with me after the 8.30 service here to St. Mary the Virgin Akai for the 11 o'clock service. And uh, I treasured those journeys because for me, they were journeys of education. I, as a foreigner to St. Lucia, was educated by Roberto about the ins and outs of the St. Lucian society and what an education that was. Very informative. I leave it at very informative. Roberto had many sins, but the one sin that he used more often than not in that journey was God is good and good is God. That was kind of a new for me. I'm accustomed to seeing God is good and people respond all the time. But Roberto told was God is good and good is God. And he said to me he learned that from his father. As time progressed, I began to realize how important that statement was to Roberto in terms of the direction of his life in, latter, in his latter years. And I could only speak about the time that I came to, to know him. For very often, Roberto knew that I love nuts, and in particular, cashew nuts. And he would always, on a Sunday or whenever he came past this area, he would have a pack of cashew nuts for me. Not just for me, but an additional one for my wife, and she's at church today. She can confirm that. He also know, knew that as a Vincentian, I love farine. And from time to time, I'll get a package of farine. You see, I'm sharing these things with you to share with you my understanding of Roberto and also so that you may understand why the service this evening for me is a service of thanksgiving for his life and his weakness and why you probably will find that I participate in this service with a certain amount of energy and joy. I do so because I believe Roberto is at rest and is at peace with his maker. He has lived his life, whatever that may have been. But I believe that at the end of it all, there was a positive God reference in his life. And so for me, as a Christian, this service is in the light of a Christian understanding that life is not ended, it only changes. And when we lie in death, a place is prepared for us in the new life in heaven. I therefore speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. First of all, permit me to express condolence to Roberto's son and other members of his family and friends who are with us. We want to show you that in this time of bereavement, we shall keep you in our prayers. We pray that the death of Roberto would not be the end of all things for you as members of the Green household, but rather it can act as an impetus to create the bonds that are so necessary for the growth and development of families. And so, do accept our condolence on behalf of the Anglican Communion of this parish, and indeed on my own behalf and that of my wife, accept our condolence. My brothers and sisters in Christ, funerals offer us a very good time for reflection. 
to reflect on our dual nature as mankind, to reflect on the fact that you're both physical and spiritual, to reflect on the fact that there is a temporary and also an eternal existence. And such reflection must at the end of it all lead us to ask and to answer the question, where will I spend eternity? To direct our reflection, I have chosen words from Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and 28. Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. For just as is appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment, so too Christ shall come again, not to deal with sin, but to take unto himself all those who are eagerly awaiting him. I repeat, for just as is appointed unto man wants to die, and after death there's the judgment, so too Christ will come again, not to deal with sin, but to take unto himself those who are eagerly awaiting him. Many persons hold the belief and they live the belief that death is the end of all things. That when this life comes to an end, when this physical body which we can touch dies and deteriorates, that's the end of it. Such a belief denies the true nature of mankind. It denies our nature as being created in the likeness and image of God. It denies the fact that we are both physical and spiritual. And uh, in a sense, it flies in the face of God and scripture. We know from the teachings in the gospel that mankind is both physical and spiritual. We know that the physical will die and it will deteriorate, it will go back to nothing. In fact, we are reminded at funeral sometimes, remember that you were dust, and unto dust you shall return. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. But beyond that, we are also told about the spiritual existence which goes on forever and ever. It is in this context that the judgment of God takes place. And uh, let us understand this. When mankind was created as told in the Genesis, he was created to be part of a community, a community that was at unity with itself and with God. A community in which God communed face to face with man. In fact, in Genesis, in the third chapter, we hear that in the cool of the evening, God walked in the garden and called Adam. It suggests, it speaks about what was a practice of God, a practice of coming to what he has created coming to the place that he had made for his creation and to literally spend quality time. This, of course, we know later on was damage. But when we look throughout scripture, we notice God constantly yearning like a parent, exhibiting the love of a parent showing the care and concern for that which he created and yearning to have once again that reunification of his creation with himself and all that he created. 
This, of course, comes to a head in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16, that well-known verse where we are told that for God so of the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. To be reunified once more with God and with God's creation and with all those who have chosen to be part of that creation. And here is where the question of the judgment comes in. For the judgment is basically the separation of persons who have chosen to live in union with God from those who have not. And uh, when we look at the Gospel of St. Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 25, and even beginning in the 24th chapter from about the 19th verse, we notice there Jesus speaking about the separation and uh, not only does he speak about his separation, he speaks of the criteria by which persons will be separated. We notice in chapter 24, there is the notion of persons must live in a state of readiness for the separation at any time. As we go through that and we come to the 25th chapter, we notice that an integral part of the separation speaks about how people live, how they live one with another, and how they were able to or did not share God's goodness with all those whom they met. That's what is at the heart of the, of the Matthew 25, when he speaks about the separation of the goats and the sheep. Those who in their day-to-day -day living help those who are less fortunate than they were to experience the goodness and the blessing of living in God's kingdom. And, at the, and on the other hand, those who were selfish enough not to want to share whatever they had to help others. Even as I speak about sharing and helping others, Roberto comes to mind. For that was my experience of him. Sharing not only his knowledge, but sharing his very substance, spending money, which he probably never had a lot of, but spending whatever he had so that others too can enjoy some of God's goodness. This speaks of how we spend time waiting this return of Jesus Christ, knowing that on the return there is the separation where he takes unto himself those who are eagerly awaiting him. Those who are eagerly awaiting him. You know, the question immediately comes to mind, so how do we wait for Jesus? Do we simply sit and do nothing? Or do we use the time in a productive manner, actively waiting him by doing what is required of him? One of the things that Jesus says to us, and we find this in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we speak about the Last Supper. And among other things, as he broke bread and shared, he gave the command, do this in remembrance of me. As often as you do this, you should hold my debt until I come again. And in that weakness, it speaks to us about us sharing with the world our knowledge of Jesus Christ. This, of course, is further compounded in Matthew 28 in the Great Commission. Go into the world, preach the gospel, make disciples of all men, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I have taught you. 
and teach them to observe all that I've taught you by sharing with others about the love of God as exhibited in Jesus Christ. And it's the point the gospel reading for this evening makes when Philip asks Jesus, we do not know the way, and he points out, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. My brothers and sisters, even as we await our time when we come face to face with Jesus, how are we living? How are we spending that time? How do we relate on a day-to-day -day basis with the people that we are in contact with on a day-to-day -day basis? Are we able to help them to experience the love and the goodness of God? Or do we withhold such an experience from them by being selfish in our dealings with people? You know, we look around our community here in St. Lucia and we hear of the crime, the violence, but we hear of people who no longer seem to have a God reference in their lives. We hear of a lot of people for whom God does not exist. We hear of a lot of people who live daily as if they are lords unto themselves, masters of their own destiny. And we hear of people who have become very selfish and do not show care and concern for others in their day-to-day -day existence. But is this what we are created to be? I want to say that if there's any lesson we can draw out of our service here this evening for Roberto, we can find one in his very life. One that says, remember, we are not islands unto ourselves. Remember that we cannot be okay if our friends and our neighbors are not okay. A lesson that says to us, whatever I have, is God's gift to me, and it is best used when I share it with others. A lesson that says, I am created in the likeness and image of God, and so too is every person whom I meet, whether or not I may like them or dislike them. They too are created in the likeness and image of God, and so I must relate to them in such a manner. Where would I spend eternity? How am I preparing for that now? Is my living one that helps me to spend eternity in the presence of God? For as is appointed unto man once to die, so to Christ Jesus will come again, not to deal with sin, to take unto himself all those who are eagerly awaiting him. With the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, the accepting your sight, O Lord our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. We stand as we affirm our faith words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The intercessions, the prayers of the people. Your response to the intercession is, hear us, Lord. For our brother Roberto, let us pray to the Lord Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Roberto and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Raise our brother to eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brothers. Brother, let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. Lord Christ Jesus, we commend to your brother Roberto, who was reborn by water in the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way, and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, to the ages of ages. Amen. Invite us now to bring all our cares, all our concerns, and the course of offering to Almighty God as we remain standing to sing the offertory hymn, the hymn, Blessed Assurance.
If you have the liturgy book, we are on page 126, page 1 to 6. And the Eucharistic prayer should use Eucharistic prayer C, prayer C, which begins on page 137. You know, page 126. This Eucharist is celebrated to the honor and glory of God. Bring before Almighty God all our cares and concerns for this living. Remember all been praying for the acts of prayers and the prayers of the church. We pray especially for Roberto. Ask the mighty God to grant unto him eternal rest. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful depart to the mercy of God. Rest in peace and arise in glory. Amen. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, and this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of life eternal. For to your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in a word spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command,
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. United to your Son in his sacrifice that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and brings that city of light where dwell all his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory yours, Almighty Father, now and ever. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. On page 145, 145, the third fraction sentence. This is the true bread which comes from heaven. The response to the Agnes Day, grant him rest, grant him rest, grant him rest eternal. Lamb of God, you take with the sins of the world. Grant him rest. Lamb of God, you take with the sins of the world. Grant him rest. Lamb of God, you take with the sins of the world. Grant him rest eternal. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise. The hymn 602, 602.
body of Christ. Preserve your body and soul until the last in life and feel on him in your heart by faith and thanksgiving. Lord, have that word. Post-communion prayer can be found on page 371, page 371, post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comforting affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy in all your sins through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Could you please stand for the commendation? That's on page 372. next to me up here.